Hi, my name is Joe Mangravito. This is Sandia. She's a grand uh, zebra. Uh, we're going to work on uh, we're going to work on some leading uh, today. Uh, and I'd like you to pay attention not only to the lesson itself, but how it's performed, because it'll apply to any lesson. Uh, now we've had these zebras for quite some time. We've worked with them. Sandia was named after the town she was born in. Now, let me just go over a little bit of a difference between horses and zebras. Uh, if you see, if you put two horses out in a pasture, uh, one of them will become dominant within a minute or two. Now, they'll do it in one of two ways. They'll either uh, passively walk over to another horse, pin its ears back, and threaten the horse. The horse usually walks off the other horse, and that's the end of it. Another way the horse will do it is aggressively charge at a horse and try to bite him or kick him. Zebras are different in that way. They want to uh, uh, exert dominance. They're like a stallion. They will be aggressive with it all the time. So where you can, where some trainers uh, use some little harsh methods, different harsh bits or training methods, uh, it'll work on most horses. Not always on a stallion. A stallion will interpret it as abuse and could possibly be aggressive and attack. Zebras will. Zebras have to be trained the way horses should be trained, in a gentle way. Uh, you have to be gentle and firm, just like a child. Uh, this, this zebra has to know that I love her, but she's not allowed to do certain things. Uh, kicking, biting, stuff like that. Uh, so, when we train horses, we, we teach people to stay under the fight level. The fight level means you don't want to get in a fight. Uh, you're not going to win a fight with most horses. With zebras, you must stay under the fight level. Where a horse, uh, if, you, uh, if you're if you aggressive or uh, harsh with a the horse, uh, they'll try to get away. They might kick out at you and then run away. A zebra will charge at you. Uh, so it's very, very important uh, to be gentle with them and firm at the same time. Uh, well, the method we're going to use is just going to be pressure and release. Everything we want from Sandia. Now, we brought her, her buddy out. He's out of frame right now, but we brought him out to cause a little distraction with her, to make it a little bit more difficult for her to concentrate. Uh, so now, uh, there's a few ways, again, now let's go back to how you become dominant with a horse or a zebra. It's very important to be dominant. If your horses or your zebras think they're dominant over you, uh, they could possibly attack you if they, uh, over food issues or water, or for any reason, if they ask you to move. So she's getting distracted now, her buddy's over there, and that's good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to apply pressure, just ask her to step forward, put pressure, step back, and release. So, so the, going back, the method is going to be pressure and release, pressure and release. That's all we're going to do. And we're going to work on leading, and I'll explain why. Is, uh, to become dominant with the horse, just like the horse is in a pasture, I could attack the zebra, which wouldn't work out well. Or I can get the zebra to do things just like a horse would move another horse around the paddock, uh, becoming dominant. So as long as I can get her to do things for me, I become dominant over her, uh, which is a nice way to work. So all I'm going to do is ask her to walk, step, step back, uh, get her to do anything. And we're going to work on leading because it's one of the first things we work on, controlling parts of the, of the horse. We need control of the horse, so leading is very important. Also, if you watch horses run out to pasture, the lead one's always in front. If the, uh, another horse, a lower in the pecking order, tries to pass them, that lead horse usually kicks out at them. Uh, so if, if I could teach her not to pass me, then she's becoming subordinate. And that's very important in, in training horses or zebras. So I'm going to ask her to take a step, and I'll pull. And she did. I'm going to stop her, and I'm going to release. So pulling forward, when she steps, I'm going to release. Just one step. A lot of petting and praising afterwards, they, they, they get very familiar with that and they understand it. And they love to be scratched. So her reward not only would be the release of pressure, but also uh, a little massage. Okay, we're going to do it again. I'm going to ask her to back up. When she does, I release. Forward. Um, I got pressure. She's not moving. I'm just going to wait. Right now, I'm more comfortable than her. And she stepped forward and I released. And right now, I'm not concerned her going all over. Uh, I'll refine that in a little while after we get some more control. Now, one of the things I could use our training whip for would be to tell her to back up. So if I tap it in front of her and she backs, I release. 
First, I'm going to pick up on the lead. The, I'm going to use the cue that I want later on. So I'm going to pick up. She doesn't back up. I tap, and then I release both. I release this and stop the tapping. Come back. Again, I'm going to ask her to come. I'm going to release. Always the release of pressure. She's expecting that. Now, what we'd like them to do is lead next to us, just like a horse. So I'm going to first start working on moving forward. I would pull her forward and then release when she steps forward. I could also use the, <laughs> she wants to lie down. I could also use the whip for a go forward cue to ask her to move forward. It, going forward cue is very important. We teach all our horses. It helps in getting them on a trailer or across a creek or anything. A go, good go forward cue is very important. So this is Bullet, her buddy. Uh, they're not related. But they were born within a day apart. So she's a little jealous now that uh, he's out allowed to graze and she's not. But we want that distraction today. We'd like to work through some distractions, through some adverse conditions. This isn't a huge distraction, but it's enough to, uh, to cause her to, to increase her learning ability. If she can learn through distractions, it's much better. Okay. Uh, now... Uh, one of the things we want in leading is the horse not to pass us. So we might we might ask her to go forward. She should move with our body. When I stop, she should stop. Now when I back up, I'd like her to back up. So I'm going to teach her. I'm going to move my body first. That's the cue. Tap the ground. Tap the ground. Good for you. We're going to go forward again. Stop. Always release the pressure. That's the paycheck for the horse or the zebra. Watch, I'm going to ask her to back up with my body first. I take a step back. If she doesn't step, I tap the ground and I can pick up on the lead again. Again, forward. Oh, she stopped. Very good, so I'm not going to apply pressure. Now back. I kiss a little. The kiss is just an indication to the zebra that I want something. We use that all the time uh, so they get used to it. Once you kiss, they start to try to figure out what you're looking for. So going forward, and she walks. I stop, she stops, back up. Good. So she did it with the kiss, knowing I was asking for something. She scanned her brain, saw me moving back. So of course we don't have all her attention right now. She's looking around at her friend. She wants a graze. Uh, but obviously we have enough to control her. If it got out of hand, uh, it was just a little too much for her. Uh, then we removed the distraction and worked there. Again, forward. Stop. Pay attention. Good girl. Good girl. Now, obviously, we work, we've been working on leading with her before. Uh, now, I'd like you to to think about the lesson, not, not so much the particular lesson, but how we performed it. Everything is pressure and release, uh, whatever we want from them, whether it's under saddle, on the ground. Uh, if we wanted her head to drop, teach her a head down cue like we do horses. We're going to pull down. When she drops her head, we're going to release. So it, later on, it doesn't. The, the pull down becomes a cue rather than pulling down. We just put pressure on the top of the pole. She moves her head, I release. Watch again. I'm going to ask down, and she drops. So there's our head down cue from the ground. Now, let's see how her ears are today. Uh, she's got a particular problem. She doesn't like her ears touched. So if we wanted to work on that without getting in a fight, remember that. We don't want to get in a fight. Now, there's a few ways we can do it. We can just touch her ear and come back here. Touch it and come back. Quick. Aha, uh -huh. see if I leave it there too much, she's going to throw her head around. So, uh -huh. so we can be real quick with it. Uh -huh. And she's probably thinking, oh, if you leave it there any longer, I'm going to throw my head around. Uh -uh. So I'm just going to bore her. And then I might start slowing the action down. Good. And you want to pet her afterwards, make it rewarding for her. 
And I'm not going to fight a lot with her. I'm going to let her toss her head. Again. Real quick. find a spot that she likes on the ear, we can go to there. Start scratching, she doesn't mind it, then I touch her ear. So we found the spot. Again, pressure release, pressure release. Now I'm going to, one of the things you'd like to do is have your horse or zebra uh, respond to other people. We'd like her to think every animal, every horse with two legs, humans, are higher in the pecking order. So after you teach the horse leading or anything, uh, what you'd like to do is bring in someone else to work with the horse also. The more people that work with the horse, the better. The horse understands that all humans are in charge and they won't be aggressive towards humans. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is have uh, Brittany Beaupier. Uh, she's our resident uh, zebra trainer, head zebra trainer. She also heads the uh, certification program on zebra uh, training. So she's been working with Dee, and there you go. she's going to just show you a few things that she does. So she, we were talking about leading and backing up. Good girl. So we have her perform the same act I did. Brittany might take it a little further. Maybe you want your zebra to back up pulling on its tail. No lead. Good girl. Our next lesson will show you how to do that, and it's very easy. All of this stuff is very easy if you take your time and you go at the zebra's speed, not the trainer. See if she can give you a kiss. Alright, that's our lesson for today. Short lesson. I hope you've gotten something from it. And remember, safety. Safety's first for you and then the animal. Uh, both. Uh, thank you, Dee. Maybe you can get her to lie down. There she goes. I don't know if you're in frame. Good girl.